This problem is about computing volumes of rotation. Although it's not mandatory, this problem lends itself very well to the cylindrical shell method. Let R be the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equals 2 square root x plus 3, g of x equals x, and the y-axis. Compute the volume of rotation formed by revolving R about the y-axis. This problem will be a lot of work, but don't get intimidated. The most important thing you can do is to draw a careful sketch, and that will help guide you. In order to draw an accurate picture, you must have the correct intersection points of the graphs of F and G. Let's compute those. To find the x-coordinates of the intersection point, we need to solve for x in the equation f of x is equal to g of x. That means we need to solve 2 root x plus 3 is equal to x. The first step is to bring everything to one side of the equation. Then, I like to replace the square root by the exponent 1 half. I find it's easier to work with. To solve this, we can actually factor this expression. It factors to x to the 1 half minus 3 times the quantity x to the 1 half plus 1. Solving this equation equals 0 means either the first term is 0 or the second term is 0. The first term gives x equals 9 and the second term gives no solution. Now that we know the x-coordinate of the intersection point, we can draw an accurate picture. In black, we have the graph of g of x, which is x. In red, we have the graph of f of x, which is 2 root x plus 3. They intersect at the point 9 comma 9. The region in question is bounded between the graph of f, the graph of g, and the y-axis. We will make a volume of rotation by taking this region and revolving it about the y-axis. It is usually very difficult to picture what this resulting volume will look like. However, it's easier if you can just draw a little rectangle and see what happens to that little rectangle, and then it's easier to imagine the whole volume. Whenever you draw a region in the xy plane, you always have two choices for drawing your little rectangle either vertically or horizontally. One of them will be easier than the other. This picture displays a horizontal rectangle. We will be taking this rectangle and revolving it around the y-axis. Now notice that the left side of the rectangle starts at F and the right side of the rectangle ends at G. However, if this rectangle is a little bit lower in the region, the left side begins at the y-axis and the right side ends at g. This will cause us to have to write two separate integrals. In this picture, we have a vertical rectangle. Again, we will be revolving this around the y-axis. Notice that the top of the rectangle is always at the graph of f and the bottom of the rectangle is always at the graph of g no matter where you put it inside the region. This is good. This indicates that we will only have to write one integral to solve the problem. We still need to compute the volume of rotation. However, it is difficult to see the volume all at once. The way to do it is to take a small test region, revolve that around the y-axis, and then add up all the volumes from each individual test region. This small rectangle represents our test region. Let's see what important quantities we need to keep track of. We need to keep track of its height, we need to keep track of its location on the x-axis, that's because we'll be revolving it around the y-axis, and we will need to keep track of its width. We will give it a small width, delta x. When we revolve this small rectangle about the y-axis, it's relatively easy to see that it should sweep out a narrow cylinder. 
And let's look at the dimensions of that cylinder. We need to determine the height, the thickness, and the radius of this cylindrical shell. The height is given by f of x star minus g of x star. The thickness is given by delta x. The radius of the shell is given by... We need to compute the volume of this one cylindrical shell. Technically, this will not be the exact volume of the shell, but it's close enough for our integral. We will cut the shell vertically and unroll it to a rectangular prism. We need to write down a few dimensions in the shell and in the rectangular prism to get the volume. Specifically, we need to know the height, the width, and the length of the rectangular prism. The height is equal to f of x minus g of x. The width is equal to delta x. The length is equal to the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi x. The volume is 2 pi x times f of x minus g of x times delta x. Remember, that is the length times the width times the height. We have just computed the shape that will result from revolving this small rectangle around the y-axis. The whole idea of this method is to now take lots of little rectangles just like this one and fill up our region. That way we can approximate the total volume by adding up the volume of all the small contributions from each rectangle. Let's start with n rectangles filling up this region. We can add up the small volumes from each rectangle. So our total volume will approximately be the sum from 1 to n of the volume of each piece. That is, the sum from 1 to n of 2 pi times xi, f of xi minus g of xi times delta x. This is a Riemann sum. We want to let n go to infinity and delta x go to zero. In the limit, we will recover the integral from zero to nine of two pi x times f of x minus g of x dx. Where do we get the lower limit and the upper limit of integration? To figure this out, we go back to our sketch with all the little rectangles. We need to move this rectangle from the leftmost part of the region to the rightmost part of the region. The leftmost x-coordinate we encounter is x equals zero. That is the lower limit of integration. The rightmost x-coordinate that we encounter is x equals nine. That is the upper limit of integration. We are almost finished with this problem. All that's left to do is compute the integral for the volume. We plug in what f and g are, and then expand everything out into one expression. Now we can anti-differentiate to get this expression. At this point, it would be best to get your calculator to finish off this evaluation. The final answer will be, the volume is approximately 458.4 cubic units. Let's do a quick recap. The first and most important part of this problem was to get an accurate sketch of our region. Then we decided to use small vertical rectangles as our test shape. We revolved those around the y-axis to find that our test volume is a cylindrical shell. Then we computed the volume resulting from one rectangle. We called this the ith volume, and it was approximately 2 pi times x sub i 
times f of xi minus g of xi times delta x. To conclude, we took the volumes resulting from many rectangles. So the total volume was the sum of the small volumes. In the limit, as n goes to infinity, we recovered this integral for the volume. 